tech and cyber it's not about gender it's just about appetite how, how does that academy work we have an umbrella with the exclusive academic concept and then we have two pilots uh one in the us and one in france for instance i'm showing a bit what we are doing in france in france we have decided to invest on interns that means to really train them at the earliest stage possible for them to be operational day one when they will be fully graduated what it means it means we have a three-year program where we are combining um let's say practical on the field experience mm -hmm. because they will work with us with the client the customers um and on top of that we are providing additional theoretical trainings on top of the school for them to um get a high level of qualification and certification and it's what we're doing three years program and that means after three years our student will have something around 17 certification from technology from the market which is very unique that means they will be highly qualified wow. and uh, certified and they have the practical on hands-on experience of working in yeah. the business which is yeah. just, just as obviously if not more important <laughs> to be able to see how it works yeah, yeah it's making the main difference because uh, cyber attack are evolving so fast sometimes companies are a bit not reluctant but they don't have time to invest. They want immediately to fix it because they want to protect their organization, which makes sense. Mm -hmm. So they prefer sometimes to hire experience versus new fresh graduates. And we I realized mean, that yeah. when we were hiring fresh graduates, let's be frank, we did initially one year and a half for them to be operational, which is very long wow, when you are really? uh, in, a, in, a, in a world moving so fast. So if the reason we want to change that, that means after the three years, they will be operational day one. Yeah, and it's a massive difference. That's an amazing initiative. Like, and do they get to work in different parts of the business during that time, at different functions? Yeah. So, it, uh, in France, it will be mainly technical, okay, totally technical. But the initiative we have in the US with uh, California Polytechnic mm. is uh, more, uh, let's say, transverse in terms of role because it's, let's say, forty percent technical, forty percent sales, and the rest is more. Um, uh, I mean, generic yeah, function yeah, yeah. as finance. Uh, looking at our uh, workforce, we have massively stay in the indoor type of profile and technical ones. So it's where we have to mm. really secure the knowledge of tomorrow. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to the HR Leaders Podcast. On today's episode, I'm joined by Lawrence Galland, who's the Chief People Officer at Exclusive Networks. During the episode, Lawrence shares how exclusive networks are nurturing the next generation of cybersecurity professionals, how the Exclusive Academy is helping to bridge the talent gap, and the key strategies they're using to attract more women into cybersecurity. As always, before we jump into the video, make sure you hit the subscribe button, turn on the notification bell, and follow on your favorite podcast platform. With that being said, let's jump in. Lawrence, welcome to the show. How are you? I'm fine. Thanks, Chris, for inviting me. Nice to see you. How's your uh, weekend? Uh, you know, in France, it uh, has a... Every day in, in France, it was a bank holiday. So we had a long weekend. So Us I too. have to sit and enjoy it. Did you actually... You too. Yeah, it was Monday for you. Yeah, exactly. Did you actually enjoy it or did you do work? <laughs> no, 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 no. For once, <laughs> not for once, it was pure, pure fun and, and, and sun. So it was good. Nice, nice. Well, before we jump into the podcast, tell everyone a little bit more about you personally and sort of your journey to where we are in, in, in the organization. Tell everyone a little bit about, about the business as well. Yeah, yeah, sure. So just personally, because it's sort of great to have this kind of uh, icebreaker. I turned 42 years old. I'm a, I, I'm a mom, if I can say. I have two teenagers that 12 and uh, 15 in seven days. And uh, from a professional standpoint, I have to say that my full life has been in HR. And I'm a pure tech baby. I had all my career in the tech environment. So uh, before Exclusive Networks, I was head in a recruitment agency focusing on digital world and uh, e-commerce and this type of stuff. And then I moved to a startup uh, focusing initially on retargeting. And it was a, an amazing journey because I moved the company from 300 employees to 3,000. Wow. So you can imagine that it has been probably 10 lives <laughs> in the same company yeah. um, and in this one I moved from recruitment to business partners and then all my life uh, about how to support and how to enable the business to do even better faster and to be the best business ever amazing so firstly if I need uh, tell us how you 
the journey from that organization to the company that you're at now and a little bit more about the business for people that aren't aware? Yeah, um, so I joined XYZ Networks three years ago. I will let you know a bit more about the business, but honestly, it was quite optimistic. I was not looking for a job. I have been approached by a recruitment agency and I was really not open to that. And, you know, I mean, has a good history and able to be quite convincing. And um, let's be clear, the main reason why I joined Exclusive Networks, it was for the values since day one. That means I, I have been approached, I met the founder, uh, it was a French founder. And when I met the founder, I was like, okay, I can die for this guy tomorrow. And to me, the only one way to do a, a good job is to be able to do more than just your day-to-day -day job, but just to give a sense of, you know, soul. And I have been convinced by, I mean, the humility, and all this type of value that I really like. So it was a no brainer to me, even if the challenge was quite hard because when I joined, it was a job creation. So the company has been created 20 years ago. I joined only three years ago, wow. but it was to create the great option. So it's a, a way to tell you that it was a, a huge challenge. What was some of the values that resonated with you? The values that was very key and again, super close to my heart. The first one was humidity. The founder was on, always using we and not I when at some point he has been the visionary guy. And then it was everything about a collective mindset. We will achieve together or we won't achieve. And the last thing that's very important to me, and I have to say that it's hard to find in a company and more and more hard to find, is the fact not to have any toxic addiction. That means it was not about personal agenda. It was not about uh, ego. It was not about political gain. And to me, when you want to go fast, you need to be sure that we are all in the same boat. So when I have seen that the leader was um, showing this type of value and feeling this type of value, I was feeling that when at the top, leaders have this type of way to approach uh, an organization, probably are trying to hire people uh, with a similar type of behavior and values. So it was probably a, um, a good sign to me to, mm -hmm. give a, I mean, to give a try. Yeah. And, and, and tell everyone a little bit more about the business itself. In a nutshell, what we are doing, we are protecting uh, people, data, and properties against cyber attacks. And we all know that we have more and more attacks happening. They are more and more sophisticated. We are uh, working with um, vendors and resellers to uh, protect uh, the market. Yeah. So what was your kind of understanding of the, of the industry from the outside versus going in? Because we, we all kind of hear cybersecurity, but what was your kind of perspective of the industry versus now when you're in it. I was quite convinced that with everything that is happening and the transition into a very even more digital world, yeah. it has to become a very trusted digital world because everything is digital now. So my conviction my, my conviction, sorry, was I don't really know what is it and what is behind. My knowledge in terms of pure technology is quite weak, mm. but I'm quite sure that it's an area. It's it, I, I had two convictions. The first one was I'm quite sure it's an area where uh, the the world will go of more course. and more and more. So it's a very interesting one. Mm -hmm. And my second point was really about um, it's meaningful. And, you know, I mean, I turned 42, as I said, and supporting an organization where um, I'm proud of predicting and doing something that has an impact on the on the world. It was very important. When we, when we last spoke, you mentioned um, how you're prioritizing human skills. I can imagine in an organization around cybersecurity, you have a lot of technical capability yeah. and skills. Is that one of the reasons why you're prioritizing the human skills? I mean, I'm not trying to always prioritize only human skill because I won't lie by saying that technical is not important. Oh, of course. As you said, it's super important. It's super important. And we have at Exclusive something that is quite unique because we have a one to two ratio. That means we have one technical for two sales, which is very unique. But again, the good news is because we have this unique, I mean, technical knowledge internally, I know that I can train people. Mm. I'm very convinced that in the company, you want to attract people that have not no clue, but are sensitive to this environment, but without a, without a clear knowledge, I can train them. What I don't know and what I cannot do myself is how to train people soft skills and human skills. I cannot teach to someone values. I cannot teach to someone behaviors. You know what I mean? So I prefer now to say, okay, I'm sure that I have in front of me good human being that will be very committed and very passionate with what they will do and I will teach them the job. So I won't say it's, I mean, it's a little bit great, it's in between, but we know that we can um, shape and train and uh, equip the future internally with a 
strong uh, technical skills that we have. Mm -hmm. well, but from the, the, the human skills, why is that so important in this day and age? I, I'm always saying that the difference between a great organization and a, an amazing one, or the difference between a good team and an amazing one, it's never about skill set. It's always about personal skills, um, uh, again, behavior, attitude, commitment, values. So again, when you want to do better than what you are doing, to me, you should probably uh, change a bit your angle and yeah. to look at people more than uh, their skill set or background, especially in an environment that is going so fast. I mean, cybersecurity is evolving every day. Every day it's more sophisticated. So it's so hard to close the gap and to be always one step ahead. So better to have the good people and then to equip them for success. Mm. Does that does that also um, benefit or link back to DEI as well? It's linked as well because we are very embracing the diversity as the overall topic. And for the more diverse you are, the more rich you are as well. That means you have more different angles, perspective. So it's really something that is close to our heart. And we have in place DNI policy, DNI uh, metrics that we are really tracking because we want to be as diverse as possible. Mm. Is that is that a challenge within your industry? Um, I'm, it, it, to answer, because industry-wise, it is for sure. I mean, let's be clear, yeah. we don't have a high uh, female representation in the cyber world. Internally, it's less the case uh, for different reasons. Uh, Exit Network, we have a strong brand. That means we have a strong brand and good reputation. So I have to say that when I'm looking at data, we have 47 female in the organization, 47% 47 of female in the organization, and 53% where we are combining um, let's say practical on the field experience mm -hmm. because they will work with us, with the client, the customers. Um, and on top of that, we are providing additional theoretical trainings on top of the school for them to um, get a high level of qualification and certification. It's what we're doing, three years program. And that means after three years, our student will have something around 17 certification from technology from the market, which is very unique. That means they will be highly qualified wow and uh, certified and they have the practical on hands-on experience of working in yeah. the business which is yeah. just, just as obviously if not more important <laughs> to be able to see how it works yeah yeah it's making the main difference because uh cyber attack are evolving so fast sometimes companies are a bit not reluctant but they don't have time to invest they want immediately to fix it because they want to protect their organization which makes sense mm -hmm. so they prefer sometimes to hire experience just new fresh graduate and we I realized mean, that yeah. when we were hiring fresh graduates, let's be frank, we did initially one year and a half for them to be operational, which is very long wow, when you are really? uh, in, a, in, a, in a world moving so fast. So if the reason we want to change that, that means after the three years, they will be operational day one. Yeah, and it's a massive difference. That's an amazing initiative. Like, And do they get to work in different parts of the business during that time, at different functions? Yeah, so it, uh, in France, it will be mainly technical, okay. totally technical. But the initiative we have in the US with uh, California Polytechnic mm. is uh, more, uh, let's say, transverse in terms of role because it's, let's say, 40% technical, 40% sales, and the rest is more... Um, uh, I mean, gen generic yeah, function yeah, yeah. as finance. Like if we are looking at our uh, workforce, we have massively sales vendor type of profile and technical ones. So it's where we have to mm. really secure the knowledge of tomorrow. Yeah, no, it's great. I think uh, I think that method of, of of bringing in talent from an early stage is is probably the best approach in my opinion. Um, have you looked at the numbers from a cost perspective of what it takes to typically onboard someone? um who has experience versus nurturing the talent and bringing them through the pipeline over three years yeah 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 so again the reason why initially we were more let's say uh, not afraid but reluctant to do it but now with the initiative we will do it way, way more the point was really the ramp up the ramp up phase and how mm. long we need to make them uh, operational and able again to be uh, close to the business so in terms of investments um the good news is because this initiative is so disruptive, let's say, on the market, yeah. we have the partnership with our vendors. That means, let's say, co-funded initiative. Oh, that great. I won't say the cost is nothing, but the cost is partially absorbed with the support of our vendors. Because, again, we are not doing the academy for ourselves only. Let's be clear. The volume of interns we are able to train is bigger than what we need at Exclusive Network for the future. So we have in mind that it's more a kind of, uh, let's say, 
market responsibility that we have. Mm. So with the funding of vendors and the support of vendors, the cost could be uh, easily uh, absorbable with uh, what we can generate in the future. Yeah. How, how do you envision this evolving in the future? Yeah, yeah, we want to involve in that. So it was really to pilot initially. And now we are exploring how to expand from a geographical standpoint. Okay. And we have in mind a clear expansion in APAC and in one or two additional countries in Europe. But to make it right, you need to spend proper time because again, learning by doing. Yeah, yeah. So we have the pilot, but we are learning from the students how we can keep it even more impactful for them because it's a stretch. Huh? When I met yeah, the student course. the first time, I told her them, you will work and you will work hard and a lot. So for sure, for them, it's a significant additional piece of work on top of the studies. So we will expand, but probably country by country to make it right. But the idea is to have, a, yeah, in the next three years, four or five countries maybe. Wow. Covering the academy. That's pretty incredible. That's pretty incredible. What, what would you, uh, Now you've had those conversations with some of the students, what was the key takeaways, the things that you've learned from them that you're perhaps going to change? The first takeaway has been that they really understand that it's unique. They, you know, they are, they are trying to compare with their peers because for sure we, we, we are not hiring all the students from the <laughs> yeah. same school. Yeah. So they are, they, are, they are sharing with their with their peers and colleagues and they have the feeling that the um, skill set they will have at the end is very unique. So their market view, their interest and their capability to really go where they want to mm. go for their career is very clear in their mind. So that is a real plus. What we have maybe not to balance the workload because the reality when you are a student on top of that you have experience yeah. with customer plus certification and to get the certification is complex huh? you have to do homework huh? you have to study a lot to be able to go through i mean to pass the exam it's an it's an exam for each certification so that probably it's where we have to understand that it's a lot for them to absorb but so far it's very successful mm. so it's kind of solving quite a few different problems for you one the skills obviously in the talent but also it's going to help from a DEI perspective. So you kind of, there's multiple yeah. benefits. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and it will help as well. Something that is very key in this industry and I mean, an overall in HR is the career path. When you have everybody with the same level of experience in the company, the same level, for sure it's a bit hard because at some point, you know, we, are, we cannot create and invent opportunities. Mm. So being able to uh, hire um, at the bottom is really an opportunity to create a virtuous circle where everybody can grow, develop. We have the most senior one that will retire that are sharing their experience and their knowledge to the young and new generation. And it's very, very virtuous. So for us, it's a way to have a better, um, let's say, not balance, but um, better step and clearer step in terms of career path. And the only one way to retain people is to help them to project. And this opportunity to have a better let's say, scale uh, is very unique. Mm. It's, it's so fascinating, the in industry you have, because it's such a big war on talent <laughs> that you have it's a small amount like you said and then you have the diversity piece to it as well so i think it sounds like an incredible strategy and i'm sure it helps both the the colleges universities etc they want partners like you too right because they want to have jobs and um practical would they study first and then join your three-year program or can they join your three-year program purely um with um you can see that they have that growth mindset that you see to have some technical skills already, like what level of experience they need to have? Oh, the, the students, you yeah. mean? No, 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 no experience. None. You know, they are purely interested. That means they are just wow. at school, but except the fact that maybe they are personally passionate. That's what I mean. Sometimes they are yeah. already touching at home a little bit that, mm. but no, no, no experience. Wow. As as them, they don't have anything, a sense of network sometimes, but mm. no, no, it's minimum. It's the reason why we are really combining our effort with the school to have three years combined to shape them totally on everything they should know. So no, no, it's a, it's a really a no prerequisite in terms of um, experience. The only thing is English because we are a global organization. So we need having people able to operate in English, but it's the only one prerequisite. What's, what's, I know it's may sound like a silly question, but what's to stop you from investing in them for three years and then just leaving at the end and go into a competitor? So no, it's, it's a question because I tell you, I'm not planning to, I mean, I, I shouldn't have said it this way, but I'm not planning to hire all of them my strategy and the strategy of the company is to equip the market. So what I we are putting that. in place, it's a kind of virtuous approach where after three years, some of them will decide to stay with us in France, for instance. Mm -hmm. Some of them will decide to stay with us in another country because we are covering more than 45 countries. So they have quite a interesting geographical uh, opportunity in front of them. But some of them will join our vendors. 
which is totally fine because at some point it's for the best of the market. And the reason why the vendors was mentioning their funding part of it just because the vendors are very happy to have uh, available a pool of talent for tomorrow. So yeah. let's be clear. The first thing is we consider it's a mission we should have for the world of the cybersecurity to prepare and to equip the market. So it's not it's not selfish. Where, where, where was that driven from? That, that's pretty unusual. Amazing, by the way, <laughs> but, but not common <laughs> um, as well. Like, was all of the leadership on board when you approached them with this idea or, yeah. did, or did it come from them? Like, how, how did this conversation come to life? I mean, I mean, was it a bit controversial at the beginning for me to say that I'm very happy when people are leaving? I'm not sure. <laughs> so I did not put it this way. No, I'm fair, sure you didn't. Fra- I'm sure you didn't that. phrase it that way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I framed it differently. But no, it was it, it was quite clear. We are organization able to do that. Why? Because, um, you know, we are in the middle of this ecosystem. That means we are touching already all the technologies. Mm. We are working with the most, let's say, historical reference vendor of the market and the new disruptive one. So. I won't say that we are the only one company able to do that, but we are part of the unique company able to do that, to train on everything and to equip uh, young talent with all the technology. So it was quite uh, clear to me that it was a good area and the only one way to do it properly is to do it at scale. So I'm I'm very fine with that because when you want to create, to me, I'm happy for someone to leave the company, to come back in two years, because again, you know, it's, it's a kind of circle. So I'm fine with that. And we honestly, we have to think outside of exclusive networks and we need to protect the world. And today, I can tell you that cyber attacks are, are going faster than what we can do. Yeah. So we need to be one step ahead. The only one way to do it is to forget two minutes a company and just be like, okay, we need to equip government, hospital, and all those type of organizations that are attacked every day. Because honestly, the, um, the losses in terms of, uh, the financial losses and in, in terms of reputation, mm-hmm. it's massive. We have more than 3.5 million of cybersecurity roles that are unfilled. So it's, for me, it's wow. time not to think about only us and what we need as a pipeline. We have to equip more because this volume of um, uh, role unfilled will continue growing. So we have to reduce that as much as we can. Mm. I think this goes back to what you said at the beginning, that, and this is really great, that you, you're truly living your values and purpose as a business. And your decisions are, yeah. are reflect that, right? There's a one thing saying it, <laughs> but you're literally, yeah, yeah, yeah. you're demonstrating in the actions that you're taking. The fact you're saying, hey, Chris, this isn't just about us. This is about, the, you know, protecting people, the world, the overall cybersecurity industry. We need to make sure that we're contributing to that mm-hmm. outside of our own business, which is kind of, you don't get many companies or industries <laughs> uh, doing that. But as an employee, when I see that, that's going to make me more proud to work for a company like yours, right? Which is it was, it was exactly my, yeah, it was exactly my point. At some point, you know, we want to have people uh, proud of working with us and being able to project. And I can tell you that I'm working in HR since a while now. And sometimes it can be a bit cliche, but a lot of people, a lot of people will tell you it's about money. No, it's not about money. I can tell you that people that are still in the company, First, it's because they are proud of what they are doing mm. and the company values. It's when they can develop themselves and project a long-term career. And that is very key because today we have employees super proud of this type of initiative as well. Yeah. And super happy to recommend because, I mean, each employee is an ambassador of the company. So today I can tell you that a lot of our employees are recommending, I don't know, brother, sister to join the academy because at some point it's a transmission. Yeah. And I can imagine like many years from now when you have hundreds of those students that have gone through that program you have all of the each one of them is an ambassador with a very unique story yeah right about how totally, you, whether totally. it's with you whether it's them with going to one of your partners etc comp- <laughs> even competitors they will remember that and and it, and and that's what people you know those ambassadors is where a lot of the talent comes from like you're saying through the recommendations referrals they they, they come back like you said i'm sure you've had people return Exactly. To the business. Exactly. To me, it's every, every single question of transmission and continuity. Yeah. And it's working well. You know, when we are looking at it, I can tell you that we are, uh, when people are leaving the company, because for sure, it, I mean, it does exist, probably 90% of them are saying that they will be more than happy to come back. Wow. And to me, it's exactly what we should do as a company. You know, we should be sure that when we have a story for him for him to stay and to write the next chapter, it should be clear for, for him, for him to stand to project. 
when sometimes for any reason we cannot totally match the, the expectation of a new tree in terms i don't know of location or whatever yeah. that's fine for him to be honest but we want him to leave considering that it has been a good experience and he's more than happy to recommend the company and to come back if for any reason we can hire him uh, back so yeah to me it's very, really virtuous i love it what else is um what's the, what else is top of mind for you right now what can I say? So many things. Um, I, I think that's something that is very important to me and um, it's the transformation and uh, the change management I'm still operating in the HR function. Okay, okay. You're still on that day, uh, yeah. As I'm convinced that HR... Mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean... I mean it's, it's never uh, ending. Endless, uh, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It, it's like being a mum with teenagers, you know? So it's the same. <laughs> no, because uh, I, I, I have been convinced it's the one that HR is a bad business. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it, it has been during a long time a back office administrative function, which was okay. To me, it's way more than that. To me, an HR is a change agent able to support transformation, uh, enabling the business. And to do so, I'm very continuing pushing HR to be very close to business. That means understanding what we are doing, how we are doing it, what are the KPIs. Just because when you don't know what you want to achieve at company level, it's a bit harder at the nature level to have the right initiative because we can create thousands of initiatives every day, but we need to create initiatives that will have an impact. Mm -hmm. fix, um, quick fix or long term. So that is very key to me. Um, top of my mind, I really want HR to become even more um, driven by sense of business and sense of data. Yeah, That is a key, key, key point. And um, I want as well to be even more, let's say, um, efficient in talent management. Because, you know, in any industry, when an industry is going super fast, you need sometimes to pause and to be like, okay, if we're not taking time to develop people, time is flying. And to me, uh, developing talent, managing people is not an option. It's not when you, you have time. It's part of the job and it's part of the company responsibility. So I'm really pushing hard with my HR community to be sure that any leaders on top of the day-to-day -day job yeah. and the performance expected, because again, we are doing business huh? before anything else we are doing, we are making business, just to be sure that talent development and um, and this type of, uh, yeah, let's say, areas are very key and very important and the manage as a priority. Mm -hmm. That first part that you just mentioned about the business, from a practical sense, how are you making sure that you and your team are close to the business? The first thing is HR for sure is a strategic function part of any leadership team. And when you are at the leadership table in a country, in a region, whatever, you are every day or every week in discussion about where we are, margin, business, revenue. And that is a way to understand the way it works. And I'm always asking HR to raise their hand if they are unclear regarding what is discussed, because for sure it can be very technical, let's say, or very precise. Um, but to me, the first thing, HR is part of the leadership team. HR, when they are uh, keen in pushing initiative, I'm always asking what will be the outcome? What do you expect? If it's just to launch an initiative in sake of launching it, then yeah, I it. won't say I don't care, but I have no value. What I want to understand is how you want to influence and what do you want to influence? Mm -hmm. And we can have different answer, but it's really a kind of mindset. And um, last thing, when you're asking me how I'm doing it, for me, everything is about data and KPIs. That means I'm really asking HR to drive HR the same way we are driving business. Yeah. All the time with data to be able to predict, because you know, Chris, I mean, you, you know HR since a, since a while, HR by design could be so emotional. Everything it was, is emotional. It was for a long time. time. Yeah. Mm. And it's fine because for sure it's about people. So it's it's normal to have feelings and emotion. But the only one way to manage it right and fairly, it's to be driven by data. So to me, having an HR function, again, super close to business data, but HR data as well, is a top priority. And it's a, probably a, my top priority every morning. Yeah. What would you say is like the biggest challenge that you faced in, in terms of becoming a data-driven HR leader? Because that isn't ty typically, you know, when you first came into the function, that wasn't very much the case, right? So there's been a, a lot of growth yeah. and learning, I'm sure. So what would you say is the biggest challenge mm. personally that it's taken? <laughs> I mean, I, I, I don't know personally, but the biggest challenge I have is to make data accurate. Because driving <laughs> yeah. data is good, but the prerequisite is to make it accurate. No, but yeah. that's that's true. It's when true, you yeah. are um, uh, using so many data, you have to trust the data because it's key. Mm. You have to trust 100% your data. So that is really a super important challenge uh, um, and, a pro and probably the main one. And the capability to give a sense behind the data because the data by itself has no value. 
it's what it means, what is the story behind, what is the explanation. It's just, it's when you are looking at I don't know uh, gender diversity ratio. Okay, you have the data. But when you have the data, okay, what it means, what we want to do with that, and what is the initiative, what is the story. So it's all this type of strategic aspect behind the data. The data is a prerequisite, but it's not the end of the story. But again, like you said, it also, that's why you need to understand the business because you have to have the yeah. why, the goal, the KPIs, or where we're going, and that's why that and then that informs the direction that you take with you and the team right totally uh, otherwise yeah. you're just kind of going in a million directions <laughs> uh, like you said it's like and especially and it, it's great to have all this data you that we, <laughs> yeah and we created the functions three years ago so i can tell you that every day i can have thousands of initiatives if i want but as well i mentioned to you that hr is change agent so we need to be sure that any initiative is why we are doing it what do we want to achieve because we have more than 2,500 employees mm. that have to understand why we are doing things and that like, uh, you know, cumul accumulating so many initiatives just to show something. To me, it's not about show off, you know, it's really about yeah. adding an impact. What are some of the um, tools and technologies you're using at the moment, just out of curiosity? Um, um, we are quite, we are mixed between homemade tools. Mm -hmm and uh, tools that we leverage from the market. But for, again, my priority, again, for me, the tool is just a vehicle. So I'm not a huge um, picky person in terms of tools. My top priority is much more okay, the usage, the adoption. Yeah. So I would say that any tools could work as long as the user is, I mean, understand why he's using it and what the value That's and true. what we will do with that. For me, as long as manager has qualitative, constructive, and the right level of discussion with an employee, I'm fine with that. So I'm trying to explain sometimes, okay, capturing it in a, in a system at some point, it's long sometimes, boring sometimes as well, but it, it, sh it should take two minutes because all the rest is important. Discussion, uh, the feedback, the regular feedback. Right. We should not wait every year to give a feedback. So again, tools to me, it's purely, purely a, ve a vehicle. And so far, again, it's between homemade and um, local tools that we are leveraging uh, uh, with a global scale. You made a good point there because a lot of people kind of rely heavily on the tools, but they miss the whole point of in the foot. Like you said, like people don't you know employees aren't thinking about it, it being that they can go and read it in inside of their you know system. They're thinking about the conversation they had with their manager. Do I feel valued? <laughs> um, am I? Is, do I have a voice just being heard, right? And and that conversation between the manager and the employee, that's what really matters, not the fact that it was captured. Yes, we have to do that. Great to have it, but you need to prepare your managers and your leaders and your yeah, employees for those conversations. That's the, Put your energy there instead um, as well. You're right. Um, listen, before I let you go, I'm going to jump into our quick fire round. So I'm going to ask you some questions, but you only have 30 seconds per question. Are you ready? <laughs> you're like, it's a challenge. You know, you're, you're like, asking your challenge. Yeah. You're showing you a challenge. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Go for what, it. what are your hobbies outside of the office? This one will be an easy one. Uh, I'm very uh, ordinary type of person, so very basic. I'm fascinated by my son, their growth. Uh, I cannot end a day uh, without reading a book. So purely classic type of hobbies. So okay. 20 seconds, that's fine. No, no, no glass of wine to go along with the book? <laughs> it could be. Usually, it, it won't be glass of wine. It will be glass of pina colada, but it can be. <laughs> even better, even better. If I, if I can be a bit demanding. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, what about, what if you could change one thing about HR, what would you change? Um, I do think that I would change something in terms of perception. Because to me, HR is not about being kind. It's about being fair. Mm. And it can be very subtle as a difference. But I can tell you that uh, there was a lot of confusion. And to me, the HR function is to be fair all the time. And to be, a, I, you cannot imagine how many employees came to me sometimes to tell me the runs. I'm very fine with my rating, my assessment, but very frustrated to see that other department, not at exclusive, huh, but in my previous life, other departments are not applying the same rules. And it's unfair. Mm. And people need to feel fairly treated. To me, it's crucial. So HR, it's about fairness I and love that about one. kindness i really like that one um how would you say that your uh, kids thank you chris <laughs> how would you say your kids and family would describe what you do for a living yeah so my kids and my two teenagers are probably biased because they're hearing a lot at home but um i do think that they will compare my role at work and my role as a mother and they will say okay so you are doing a bit the same job uh you are equipping 
uh, your uh, employee for growth. You are highly demanding. <laughs> you are showing direct and radically direct type of feedback. Yeah. So honestly, for them, it, they will see easily a parallel between the two worlds. And I think they are they are right because it's not that far. Yeah. If and I love that, love that. If you wasn't working in HR, what do you think you'd be doing? In like work, um, work wise, career wise, you know, potentially, no, no, potentially two things. Either I would have managed a, um, a bookshop because okay. I'm I'm just in love with books, so bookshop <laughs> could have been an option. And the second option could have been to um, manage, you know, a kind of um, retirement home, you know, because I think we will have to take care of the oldest person. And uh, I, I think that they have so many to, you know, in terms of legacy transmission. So for really to take care and to, okay. to drive this type of, uh, you know, organization or home or whatever we can call that. Love I love that. Think. Was not expecting those answers, but I love it. That's why I love asking that question. Um, um, what would you say is the biggest investment that you've made in yourself? I would say that maybe it's the answer you expect, but probably it's quitting comfortable jobs or position I had in the past, just to always be aligned with my values and to be able to respect myself and to recognize myself in the mirror, even if I was very, very uh, in a comfortable position. So I'd love quitting that answer. has been probably sometimes. That's such a good answer. Ask like, me all the question. Like, it, seems, what... it seems that you like all my answer. No, I like, no, it. no, I like that one because it's like, it's, it's, it's quite unusual because normally people say something practical and specific like a uh, education or something like that but sometimes the biggest investment we can make in ourselves is to challenge ourselves and to quit and push ourselves forward right that is an investment mm, so, and to take risks and and take risks, take risks. Yeah. That's, that is yeah and that's something that all of the hr leaders that successful hr leaders i speak to have in common they've taken risks they've taken jobs they didn't think they were prepared for they've moved to countries that they were <laughs> and uh, mm -hmm. with different cultures and thing and and, and and it's been a challenge but that's what shaped them and made them successful. Totally. Yeah. L last question. What what advice would you give to the HR leaders of tomorrow? No, no. So leaders in general, I would say two things. My two advices. Sorry, it would be two advices. The first one to be brave. So it will be a strange, but you have to be brave. Again, being a good leader, people leader, HR leader, or whatever. It's not about again being kind or being a good news messenger. It's about uh, being brave, able to share constructive, but negative feedback sometimes making tough decision and to me bravery is a uh, is not that easy to find so it's hard to find but i would say you have to be brave you have to be in the driver's seat and to make decision and to assume that and the second advice would be probably just because it's very close to my values to stay super far from anything that could be toxic in a company excessive ego political games i mentioned that at the beginning but to me uh you are saving so much time when you are operating without this type of toxic things around you so it's making a huge difference and i'm convinced that you can grow develop and um do a lot of things in a company without uh compromising with who you are so you have just to stay good human being and not to make any compromise with these type of things from my point of view but yeah. it's just my two cents love it well listen i appreciate you coming on the show I've, re I've really enjoyed it and, i'm um, super happy to have been invited I Thank you for that. <laughs> and uh before i let you go where, where can people connect with you if they want to say hi say hello where's the best people place uh linkedin yeah linkedin uh so uh, people would love to connect well, part of one of the reasons we do the podcast is which to bring different leaders together right so i'm sure there's so many le other peers of yours that would love to connect and reach out so that's why i asked that question yeah, um, and, I, and I appreciate that because I was very fascinating by the previous podcast you have done. So it's as well expanding a nature community. So yeah. yeah, that's what it's all about. Always happy to connect. Yeah. Well, listen, I wish yeah. you all the best until we next speak and uh, enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you, Chris.